What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Parkways based on Android 13 and this is the 25th September 2023 build. So the latest one as of right now comes with two separate versions, one includes the GApps and one doesn't. As usual, I have flashed the GApps included variant. And if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your Redmi Note 10 Pro, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. Now in the about section, this is how it looks like we have this park device option and right here you will get all the about section kind of info and here this is how it looks like I mean the wallpaper it shows up right here with a logo of spark West. and on the bottom here it shows built with love by unsatisfied or unsatisfied 27 so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM we have the android version as android 13 or tiramisu and we have the spark OS version as 13.8 and this is the official build also includes the GFs and again a 25th September build and the security patch that we're getting over here is the September 1st 2023 and we have the build version again 13.8 of the spark OS. the stock kernel here is the 4.14 same low hip bar plus kernel in the system settings this is how it looks like we got the gestures right here we have the quick tap actions and if you enable that we have multiple different options now the first impression I would say about this from everywhere whenever I scroll or whenever I go into the recent panel or stuff like that I have a really good haptic feedback so that is really nice and everywhere if you go back and stuff it does that haptic feedback it feels really premium and we have the quickly open camera then let me go back we have the system navigation gestures in here in the settings of it we have the pill length and radius customization and this is how long and thick it goes with the like maximum option and we have the back gesture height navigation hint and the back gesture animation hide IME button space swipe to invoke assistant is also there and it is working fine we have the left edge right edge customization let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations as well and we have the one handed mode works perfectly fine here then we have the swipe trick screenshot also that too works fine with the share edit delete and the google lens feature there is the double tap and the prevent ringing option right here also we do get a press and hold power button action you can change it to digital assistant if you want in the system profiles of course you can have these profiles or you can just turn it off if you don't want those but there is no system updater as you are noticing from here and there is also this show me parts and in here you will get the me audio direct and there are the presets i have been using it with the youth edition the sound quality with that wired headsets were really fine and we have these bluetooth headset presets as well let me go back we have the choose normal preset option like the electronic and the country dance metal all these things then we have the choose scene option then you will get the smart music video and the voice then we also get the dolby atmos in here you can toggle it on or off from right here and you can also switch this to movie music etc let me go back we also have a clear speaker option in case you want to use that we also get the thermal profiles and from here you can change particular apps thermal profile to benchmark browser camera dialer gaming and streaming we have the haptic feedback as well and it is actually working and you can change the intensity with this now let me show you the home screen this is how it looks like it looks really really cool it has a spark OS wallpaper and if you go into the wallpaper section and the change wallpaper settings there are a lot more spark OS wallpapers if you want to choose it from there there is the emoji workshop as well and there is the space options there is the living universe and stuff but yeah you do get plenty of google's provided wallpapers i guess elementary unsplash all these things so you can choose from many wallpapers over here that's cool we also have the wallpaper and basic colors and right now it shows only eight colors because i have this park west wallpaper which only has yellow and black color and we have the basic colors as well you can choose it from here for the accent color then we have the dark theme the home screen shortcuts and the app grid customization and the app grid you can change up to 6 by 10 and if you're wondering what launcher is this present by default this is spark launcher present by default here you also get the split screen and the free form mode in the recent panel and there is the clear all button then the screenshot the split app option and the google lens option on the bottom here it shows the ram user status now let me show you what else you can customize with the recents if you go to the recents there is the memory info the background opacity the clear all there is skill app google lens and we have the pin app screenshot the split app and the shake phone to clear all tasks in the miscellaneous we have the session disabling option in case you want to disable some sessions we have the background blur diff then the action toast and the restart option then the launcher vibration intensity and the haptic feedback while you're scrolling in recents then we have the allow home screen rotation the use taskbar etc let me go to the app drawer in here we have these customization then in the gestures we also have this shake gestures i'll show you that but let me show you the home screen settings we do have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen add app icons to the home screen lock layout option and the parallax kind of stuff and all the other google's kind of specific features are there and we have this music search and stuff 
and in the icons we have this apply themed icons to app drawer then the force monochrome themed icons all those things talking about the widgets yes as you can see the battery widget it's working fine i can see the bluetooth battery and there is the phone's battery user status and we have the like music kind of widgets and stuff all those things but let me tell you even the like clock widget and stuff will be working perfectly fine no need to worry about them so left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and swiping up will get you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app over here and in case you are wondering about the stock apps of this round, these are the stock apps that you will get. But let me tell you the Fresh Walls and the Pixar app are there because I was restoring my Google App Data Backup. Except for that, we do have this Viper for Android as well. And you will get plethora of options with this Viper for Android. So if you are an audio nerd, you will love this ROM. But you do get a Google dialer, so it may announce while recording a call or something like that. I don't have a SIM card inserted in the device, but Volte calling over here will be working perfectly fine. No need to worry about them. And swiping down over here will of course get you to the quick setting panel. And this is good that in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays light, which looks like this. If you enable the dark theme and if you have pure black enabled, of course it will go pitch black. And we have the toggles right here. I have added a couple of toggles. We have the Wi-Fi mobile data, the Bluetooth and the flashlight and stuff. Everything is working fine. No need to worry. Auto rotate battery saver and nightlight. And there is a screen recording option as well. And if you just go into that, we have the device audio and microphone audio at the same time recording. And we have the enable HEVC option and all other features you can see. Then we have the nearby shared, the Google Home controls, hotspot, dark theme, and the data saver always on display toggling option. You can just turn it on or off. There is no charging only always on display. We have the heads up, the ring. And this ring is actually the sound toggle, as you can see. You can put the phone into vibrate or silent from here. Let me go to the next page. We have the not disturb, the alarm, and the airplane mode. So these are all the toggles. Now here, this is really good. I have customized this brightness slider on the bottom, and there is the brightness slider percentage. This is a really unique feature that I have seen. Also, we get the auto brightness kind of toggle, and the power menu appears like this. If you tap on restart, you also get the advanced reboot if you have it enabled. Now let me show you the stock camera. Well, you do get the MIUI camera right out of the box or you can say it's a Leica camera, not version 5, but yeah, it is pretty good Leica camera. Let me actually show you the 0.6x lens is actually working fine. The 1x, the 2x, everything is working fine. And if I go into the like mode option, you will get these kind of options like the super macro mode and stuff. So yeah, you can just notice super macro mode. It's working perfectly fine. No problems. In the video settings with the rear camera, you will see there is the up to 4K 60fps option. But that will simply not work guys only 4k 30 fps up to will work with the rear camera and if you switch to the front camera yes there is a 1080p 60 fps and it is actually working fine no need to worry about that so 1080p 60 fps you do get that's a really good thing but yeah with the 4k the 60 fps will not work simply also in the portrait mode and with the front camera yes the portrait mode pictures will be working perfectly fine no problems and there's a night mode the 61 megapixel mode and the documents mode is there as well and we have the enhanced option if you need that there is a pro mode video shooting option we have the white balance focus shutter speed everything in control with like the resolution you can go up to 4k 30 fps 1300p 60 fps will be working fine no need to worry about that and if you swipe up from the bottom there is the panorama vlog vlog pro slow motion time lapse sticker avatars and all these other things like the dual video and stuff it's still there we have the super moon as well all these functionalities will be working perfectly fine i'll show you some samples right here but let me tell you like having the miui camera and it is a very optimized experience overall so this is a really nice camera to have right out of the box at least in my opinion now this is how the settings panel actually looks like but let me tell you you can actually change the whole look of this settings panel by just going into the firebox and customization i'll show you that later but let me show you this is how it looks like we have the oxygenous kind of layout in the display settings at first we have the brightness level then we have the adaptive brightness in the lock screen settings we have the privacy kind of controls control from lock device for the google home stuff and the now playing option and the always on display you can schedule it from right here and we also have the ambient display right here there's a pickup it is actually working fun i'll show you that let me go back we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes then we have the dark theme and if you go into it we do have this pure black option enabled so if you enable this dark theme it will apply it to the whole ui and we have the display size and text customization you can do that from right here we have the night light the live display option and you can have the anti flicker or the de-streaming kind of mode from right here then we have the reading mode color calibration and right here you can change the rgb control and we have the hue saturation intensity and stuff let me go back we have the normal colors you can change it to boosted saturated adaptive and natural i've been using it with a boosted one that's the best option i would say in the rotation settings of course we have the 180 degree stuff then we have the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can choose the peak refresh rate up to 120 hertz and it is a very smooth experience i would say and we have the allow window level blurs double tap quick pocket detection 
the double tap to sleep, wake up on plug, even the desktop mode is there so you can use it. Now let me go into the battery settings. This is how it looks like. Now in here, I would say I am disappointed because I cannot really see the battery kind of info. Charging cycles, the current or design battery capacity, those things simply does not show up over here. And for Redmi Note 10 Pro, I don't know why it's not there in most ROMs today. We get the battery temperature at least. There is a charging control as well, but make sure you disable it if you want fast charging to work. We have the adaptive battery and we have the battery saver mode and we get to see a big kind of battery bar over here. Now let me talk about the battery life. With the Echo battery app I have tested it with, it shows about six hours of screen on time, but in my opinion, if you have a decent battery, it will give you about seven hours of screen on time, no problems with that. The screen off here, you can see it's just like huge 62 hours and the combined use is also huge 40 hours. So that's like almost two days worth of combined use. So yeah, I would say the battery life is decent. And in the health section for me, my battery health right now shows as 82%. Now do remember guys, my device is about two and a half years old. So with that old of a battery, still I would say 82% is decent for Android device. And if you're wondering if the fast charging is working or not, yes, the fast charging is working fine. No need to worry about that. But make sure you have the charging control disabled for the first charging to be working perfectly. And one really cool thing of this Spark OS that I have seen while it's offline charging, it looks so beautiful like whenever the phone is off and you just plug it in, the charging actually looks so beautiful. In the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. We have the media call ring, etc. volume controls. Then if you scroll down more, we have the phone ringtone kind of stuff. System haptics are there. These are the options. Then we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. And we have the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, screenshot sound, top bar app, volume control. Charging sound is there as well. You can enable or disable it from right here. Then we have the in-call vibration options. And while playing music, this is how it looks like. And this is really cool. In the volume panel, just notice I'm playing a music from right here. And it has this kind of window and you can change the output device from right here as well. You can pause or play the music from right here. It has this kind of animation. Here, if I just show you the volume panel, this is how it will look. So this is a really cool thing that I have been noticing. We have the profile changing option in the volume panel right here. Then we have this device switching option as well right here. Now also, on the bottom, you can play or pause the music from right here. You can just change the track from right here. This window, it's really cool. I have never seen this in any other ROM. Talking about basic things, yes, it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So banking apps will not be a problem here. Also, the DLO info stays as L1 here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here. Also, this ROM does have the IR Blaster working perfectly fine if you're noticing that light over there. And this ROM also does offer the Pixel kind of unlimited backup for photos and videos at no extra cost. So this is really a nice feature to have right out of the box. In the security settings, this is how it looks like. If you go into the settings of it, we have the quick unlock option. You can use it and we have the all other features. Then we have the face unlock and fingerprint and there's the app lock as well. You don't have to go into the more settings for the app lock. I've already added those. And there is the option unlock your phone using your fingerprint face as well. But let me show you one thing in here. We have this always require confirmation and require eyes to open for the face unlock. And there is a skip lock screen option. But in the fingerprint, there is a touch to unlock. So if you don't want this option, you can just disable this one so that whenever you have to unlock your phone, you have to press the fingerprint scanner with your registered finger. Only then it will unlock. Now, if I just play a music and in here let me actually show you if I just double tap and go into the lock screen as you can see the music is not being played in the background so it was not unlocking with the face unlock that's why I have to actually really set up the face unlock again and the setup of this face unlock wizard actually looks beautiful let me actually do that so it shows looks good so face unlock setting up is done right now let me try one more time with the face unlock and here I'll just swipe up so as you can see the face unlock currently it's not working i have no idea why even when i swipe up so that's how it is but yeah the fingerprint scanner it's actually working fine so that's a good thing yeah when unlocking i have seen it takes a little bit of time if the phone is in idle but yeah otherwise it unlocks normally and it does this kind of animation but that's how it is the double tap to sleep is working double tap to wake is also working fine let me show you yeah, as you can see, double tap wake worked perfectly fine. The always on display, I'd say it goes really, really dim. It can actually be seen only in the very dark rooms. So that's how it is as of right now. But yeah, always on display does work, but it's really, really dim <laughs> that you cannot really notice. But here I have to say again, the face unlock is kind of a gimmick. So I would say just delete your face data. But yeah, the app lock, this is how the window looks like of the app lock. And if you just tap on the fingerprint scanner, it unlocks perfectly fine. And talking about the pickup gesture, let me actually show you, it does work. And here, if I just pick it up, as you can see, this is how the ambient display will look. 
So yeah, the pickup gesture is actually working fine here. That's a really good thing. Now from the test view website, you can notice that in the Chrome, there is only like 80, 83 FPS showing up. But yeah, 120 FPS in overall UI, it's working fine. With Chrome, sometimes it shows about 80, 90 FPS. So that's how it is. And here, let me actually open a couple of more apps so that I can show you the scrolling experience and stuff like that. Let me open Play Store and let me open YouTube as well. And even the RAM management, I'll show that. So let me try to open all the apps from memory. And as you can see, Chrome is still in memory. And YouTube, yes, it is still in memory. And Google Home, still in memory. Twitter is still in memory. And even Play Store, I think it reloaded, not really sure. But yeah, let me try to open the safety net test, DRM info, and the IRL Blaster app. So all these things are in memory. The Instagram I did not open earlier, so it's not in memory, of course. But yeah, overall, I would say the RAM management over here, it's really smooth. And every app, as you can see, the switching between apps, it's working perfectly fine. Right now, if I open X, and here, if I just go on top, and here, if I just start scrolling, just notice how smooth it is. Everything, it's smooth enough, I would say, for a device like Redmi Note 10 Pro. So yeah, overall, the scrolling and stuff and switching between apps, it's not a problem in this ROM. And here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test to get you an idea about the overall UI experience of this ROM. Do let me know guys in the comments what you guys think about this ROM and please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest Spark OS. And now let me show you the customizations of this ROM. Inside the fireworks, this is how it looks like. Now firstly, let me show you the theme section. In here we have the monet settings, accent colors, the background colors, the luminance, chroma factor and the tint background, everything you can customize. We have the nav bar style as well. These are the options for the nav bar that you will get over here. Then we have the font styles and it looks big and we have these plethora of fonts over here including with the like nothing dot font everything is there no need to worry about them there are plethora of options like the one plus sense and stuff then we have the icon pack as well these are the options plethora of options i would say then also the signal icon styles are there and just notice how many options are there we have the wi-fi icon styles as well and these are the options also we get the data icon and separate options like grid icon and we have the aurora and stuff like that looks really cool that it actually shows how it will look then if you go back we have the icon shapes as well and these are the options for that then we also have the tiles layout and these are the layout options we have the quick setting portrait and the height labels label text size vertical layout etc then we have the background transparency option the quick setting dual tone header image and we have the blur radius for the header image you scroll down more we have the system info system info icon animation styles you can change from right here if you scroll down even more we have the brightness sliders and you can have it on show always and the position you can change it to bottom then the auto brightness icon is there the brightness percentage option this is the one i was talking about and we have the brightness slider style you can actually change it i have been using it with the inline then we have the battery styles i have been using this follow status bar this is for the quick setting panel and we have the battery percentage the battery estimates and there is the data usage clear all notification button reticker and the app color option is also there you can use it the four stop themed icons and anything you change in the ui it will actually like four stop the ui and restart it for the time there is the colored quick setting notification icon four stop button and we have the edge lighting as well you can enable it if you want then we have the music ticker the heads up less boring heads up timeout and the volume panel on the left side the volume panel styles as well you can change from right here music card volume media output and the about phone style as well you can change so you can change everything almost we have the settings contextual messages then we have the hide user card preference search bar style random settings header image and you get up to like 98 header images for the settings let me just cancel it we have the settings header text and even the setting style this is what i was talking about that you can change the whole settings ui style to ion card ui google material u and the stock pixel arcan and the normal oxygen colorways and the legacy oxygen OS options now in the lock screen we have the media cover art then we have the battery info the charging animation and we have the weather settings right here. You get plethora of options for that. Now let me show you the lock screen clock styles. This is how the UI actually looks like. It looks like that rising OS UI and you can actually switch it by just sliding or swiping on them. There are plethora of options for the lock screen clock. Swipe on them and it does this kind of animation. If I do it slow, just notice how beautiful it looks. And you can apply that if you want to. And we have the lock screen clock bottom facing, then the small lock screen clock text size and even the large lock screen clock text size, you can actually change, but it's fullest with the default one. And we have the lock screen clock format, single or double line, you can choose. And we have the lock screen date style as well. I mean, the date font style, plethora of options for that. We have the user switcher, the ripple effect, always on display icons on lock screen and the AOD icon size option is there. Then we have the power menu, pulse and the ambient display option. 
you don't want this always on display icons you can just disable that let me just enable this media cover art so yeah as you can see right now i can notice the album art i think it was because i didn't have the album art enabled pardon me guys i <laughs> did not know that i had that media artwork disabled so yeah right now as you can see the lockstone media artwork actually looks be pretty beautiful it works perfectly fine no problems with that and of course in here we have the back screen for the charging animation the weather settings right here as well for the lock screen and we have the status bar settings right here we have the status bar icons headset bluetooth etc kind of icons are there you can just enable it from right here we have the clock style right and left you can choose and the clock date etc and i think there is the background chip yes you can actually customize the background chip from right here to different options and even the clock font size the date format etc you can change and we have the vaulty icon and the vo wi-fi icon i guess and we can actually have these dynamic icons if you want we have this disable data indicator and we have the combined signal icons 4g icon display 5g indicator instead of lte or 4g this is a really unique option you can enable it if you want we have the roaming indicator the bluetooth battery status wi-fi standards and there is the wi-fi standard showing up as five here if you're noticing up close we also have the colored icons the height notification icons show notification count etc and in here we have the battery style and this is for the actual status bar i have been using it with the ios 16 style looks very beautiful and we have the battery percentage you can put it to next to the icon or inside the icon but i just put it to hidden because ios 16 style already has the battery percentage inside the icon then we have the battery percentage when charging and even the battery bar option is there in the gestures we have the double tap to sleep the quick pull down and the double tap to sleep as well pixel animation and invert layout option is there and the other action gestures i didn't show you this one let me actually show you the launch gesture and in here if i just put it to one and right now if i just shake it once as you can see the torch toggles on so this launcher does have the switcher and if i just shake it one more time as you can see the torch toggles off so this is really good again as you can see it works perfectly fine so this is a really handy feature you can use it if you want and in the miscellaneous settings we have the game space and you can add any game from right here and you can even change the profiles of the games to performance and stuff then we have the full screen apps the smart pixel system manager if you just scroll down more we also have the parallel space so you can have two accounts for whatsapp here we have the screen of animation there is the crd or scale then we have the Android P style animation, the toast animations are there. Then we have this ad block and stuff. I haven't tested that. We have the unlock higher PC in games, unlimited Google photo storage, Netflix poof. And we also have the blink flashlight for incoming call and customize your hardware buttons. And in here, you can actually choose this to alert slider, click quick partial screenshot, long press power button toggle torch and the reorient and stuff like that. In the power menu separately, we have the screenshot, the lockdown emergency and the device control options and even the power menu style you can change. So if you want to have very old like legacy kind of options and here if I just show you the power menu, as you can see, this is a very old option. And even the grid option is there and with that, this is how it will look. Classic Android 8 option is there. Well, this was love. Let me show you the Android 11 style as well. Here, this is how it will look. Well, this is looking really, really beautiful and you can go straight into the device controls from right here. Then we have this opacity stuff customization, then the dim background options, then the power menu animation you can change and we have the advanced restart and the secured lock screen so that power menu does not appear from the lock screen. So these are all the customizations of this ROM and this ROM has huge, huge amount of customization. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.